I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Yeah, I've got to. But this happening just means that we're like better at troubleshooting. Like it, all it does is make you better get better at troubleshooting, which means in Fair. The, the odd event that we're in a situation where someone else is having issues, we can be like, "Oh, do the thing," and then the stuff just goes turn away. it on and off again. Yeah, the, it, <laughs> God damn it! That was on, <laughs> is that still Netflix? That was on Netflix for a little while. The I, I don't know. Oh, uh, it was I, good. It. It was a great show, but like I, I can't I for some reason I can't go back and watch it just because I remember it being way better than it actually is. That's fair. Oh, before we keep talking, should we sync? Let's sync. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So three, two, one. Oh, let's do it one more time. All right. One okay. more time. One more time. Three, two, one. That that's the one. That was a good one. That was a good okay. one. <clears throat> oh, just because we were talking about um, accents before. Okay. So I learned, I I, I learned something, and that is Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. the, the they 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 estimate that Shakespeare's accent. Then, if you want to have like an idea of what the the white would have been red was, would be closest to a modern day Boston accent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that oh. that face is the right fucking reaction. Oh. Shakespeare would have been talking. Chowder, <laughs> ha, Chowder. What light through yonder window break? <laughs> God damn it, Lisa! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I was I was gonna I was trying to get to like the point where I could do an accent that's yeah. why I was saying chowda because I literally can't like it's hard for me to like I can envision it but yeah. like turning that into into voice <laughs> hard for me yeah but Jesus Christ you just have to imagine you're made mostly from dairy and clams and then you've got yourself a Boston accent <laughs> oh and then everyone in Boston was mad well the like People who listen. Yeah. Which really mean, everyone in many. Boston. We're the number one radio show in Boston. John and Brandon in the morning. <laughs> I I feel like there's like We're the morning I mean, that one a soundboard. That that one person might disagree, but like I feel like we're we don't have enough like blatant racism on this podcast. Oh, for Boston? Yeah, that's true. We've, for we've Boston. Gotta, we we've gotta really turn that crank that way up. Oh. Yeah, we we're like we're like way underperforming we for uh, for that market. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so uh, was it yesterday or the day before? One of the days, Pika was doing her playing her favorite game called Run Around the House and bring mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. bring us whatever object she finds. So she just runs up and hands you random shit. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm in the kitchen. Erica's in the living room, and I and I go. Here, Erica go, oh, thank you. What do you, what do you have there? And then here, Brennan, 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 Brennan. She comes right into the kitchen, trying to hand me some, hand me an uh, an object. I'm like, don't, you, like, you're already touching it. I don't have to touch it. Don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. She, she, it was, it was a piece of cat shit. She. <laughs> 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 oh, <God. laughs> She found a dingleberry. <laughs> my my favorite part, my favorite part of that story is where Erica is like running to hand it to you. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want it. Don't hand it to me. We both don't need to touch it. <laughs> we don't both need to be contaminated by the cat. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Oh man, that reminds me. Uh, Dakota. Uh, he um. He did a he did a struggle poop, right? Was it, was uh, it a yowl? more than once? Was he doing a yell? No, 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 no. When I say struggle poop, I mean a poop that stuck to the fur on his tail. Oh yeah. Um, 
he did it, and then like I see him dragging his ass across the across oh, the crowd. God. I'm like, oh god, no, no, no! And then I run, I stop him, I pick him up, and like I have a a, a paper towel to like, yeah. you know, basically wipe him. <laughs> and he gets so mad at me, and he just like slaps out at me, and I'm like, you you bite me every morning for food. Your your attacks do nothing anymore. <laughs> I am immune to you. So he was like pissed at me for like a yeah. good day or two, and I'm just like, fucking stop, <laughs> fucking cats, Ugh. cat shit. God damn yeah. it. Mulder did the same thing a few weeks ago where we were in the living room mm. and we see her like scooting across the floor like a dog, and then there's this streak through the carpet behind her. Like, oh no. Oh. Yeah, it's it. That's a moment of like, oh, <laughs> yeah, damn it! Like, ah, oh, that's something I gotta now, address. That's a that's a right now, now thing. <laughs> yeah, now I gotta deal with that. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I had like I think I'd poured. I was like eating when yeah. it happened too. Like I had just sat what? down to have like I don't know toast or cereal or something, yeah. and I'm just like, there goes my morning. Was it at least on like? the tile or was he on like a rugged carpeted section he was on like quote quote unquote the tile uh okay that's, that's the, an easy it, it was the laminated floor which is easier to clean yes but then i had to like hunt down all the places that he had been oh he left a little stamp everywhere <laughs> every time yeah, he sat down oh, pretty fun. much uh, so if you can't tell already, uh, welcome to Cryptopedia, uh, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. In this case, it's a cat covered in shit. I'm Brandon. I'm John. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, this week it's the last, uh, episode before Christmas, so I figured Krimbus. before Krim- Krimbles, mm-hmm. Krimblestons, and uh, so I decided to absolutely ignore that and just do the episode I was going to do anyway, um, <laughs> because I had written, and the Jackalopes voted on it, and so it's the next one you vote, uh, I'm your Soviet, so I have to go with your vote. We win. Yeah. Unless I say, unless I, say n- I don't want to, like the last time, and then I explain why, and then there were the things. Um, so, so basically, basically, you're the Soviet Union. Yes, my uh, explicit, like, every, every, yeah. You are the Soviet Union. I'm I, your Soviet. No, you're, you're, you're the Soviet Union. <laughs> I, I'm the entirety of it, presently, right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, you, you, you decide when you follow everyone's, the will of the people. Yeah. And th- that's, that's your, that's your prerogative as the Soviet Union. Yeah. Uh, so to say, uh, I'm doing a grab bag of cannibal botanicals, uh, not, they're, they're actually not cannibal. Cannibal because it rhymes, but the theme this week, uh, meat-eating plants, uh, in this, woo, holiday spirit, woo, meat-eating plants. Um, uh, <clears throat> and these, so, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that there were this many, like, legends about meat-eating plants. I didn't know there was enough to make a grab bag. There, there's enough to make a grab bag, but there's not enough substance to do, like, a whole nother singular one like the Madagascar tree. Gotcha. Um, and if you haven't heard the Madagascar tree, check out episode seven, the Madagascar tree. Um, so, so these bladed botanical bastards couldn't support an episode on their own, so we're, we're mishing them and mashing them all together. Um, and there's also, it turns out, a lot more, like, meat-eating plant legends than... Uh, I would have initially expected. Um, but we're going to start in no particular order, uh, other than the order I wrote them down in my carnivorous plant section of, like, my episode ideas I'll list. I'll show you a meat-eating plant. Um, I don't... I don't know what that means. I can go get a... I can I go get a, 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 a... Venus flytrap for you. I'll show you a meat-eating plant. I had one for a while, but I tickled their hairs too much. Oh! That sounds dirty. <laughs> that I'll sounds tickle your super hairs. dirty. Uh, <laughs> it does. 
so we're going to start in uh, Karnataka, India, a state located in the southwestern side of the country uh, with a beautiful coastline. Its capital is uh, Bangalore or, or Bangalore. I um, have a number of co-workers who work there. Uh, the area is filled with like mm-hmm. tech buildings and uh, the commute sucks a fat one. Uh, currently it seems to be pivoting to like automotive industry. At least that's like my background with the area of this, Mm -hmm. this topic. Um, I've never been, so my experience is limited to like chatting with my coworkers or whatever on our, our calls, uh, or when they like come here to visit. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never heard of the Pilimara, AKA the tiger tree, AKA the cow eating tree. Uh, However, there were ripples of it online on Thursday, October 18th, 2007, <clears throat> specifically from uh, newlandpress.com New website, which is, an, oh, New in yeah, New New, in, New India Press, so newindpress.com. It's an English website. Um, we're we're using from sans India. serifs on the, the font, everyone, <laughs> just to let you know. That's what happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the perils. It's uh, re- I'm using it's the perils of sans serifs. <clears throat> Although my favorite font is Calibri. No, actually, no. My favorite font is Century Gothic. Isn't Century isn't Gothic Calibri like number one. the default? No, no. Times New Roman is the default font for uh, Office. Um, is it is it Open Office yeah. that has Calibri as its default? I, it might be. I don't know. I just sans serif. I love it. It's great. Look at all those words. They're easy to read. Um, except for in this one time when it wasn't. And Petrami, uh, a rural village within uh, Karnataka, a young lady was walking in the field between buildings uh, in the village to go shop about midday when she saw an amazing sight. A tree appeared to be lifting a struggling cow by its hindquarters from the ground. Um, when the tree... Gra- oh, be- because... Just, Groot, because... Groot's got horny. trying to root. Groot's um, trying to root. Because this is near Christmas, I have to say something. Um, so yes. there's the Gu- the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special on Disney Plus. If you haven't seen it, yes, it features Mantis and um, Drax as main characters, uh, and it's great. It's phenomenal. How it's phenomenal it? because Chris Pratt oh, is, is barely in it. It's about him. Ah, it's about yeah, his, 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 It's about plumbing. like them doing stuff for Chris Pratt's character, but like he's basically not yeah. important to this. Like he's not important to like the comedy for the story, um, which is good because Mantis and Drax are kind of the two best uh, Guardians of the Galaxy when they like in terms of like dynamics against each other. They're two of the funniest. And it has the um, yeah. Borat's daughter from the re- from the second Borat movie. You know the like, yeah, yeah. She yes. voices she the voices bond- a Russian uh, yeah. dog named Cosmos. And that's it. That's all I had to say. <laughs> that's good. Um, th- it has nothing to do with okay. With ma- well, the only thing it has to do with man eating plants is the existence of Groot. So. A cow is getting lifted by its hindquarters. What's going on? Yeah, I'll watch it. Hell yeah. Getting frisky with it. Uh, When the tree grabbed it, the cow herd watching uh, all the animals, they they all ran for help. Uh, A band of villagers returned, led by uh, Anand Gauda, uh, Gauda, the owner of the cow, and the group uh, struck at the tree's branches until they went limp and the cow was rescued. Okay. There's there's multiple Uh, ways to read this. Yeah. Um... One of them continues the, the 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 sex joke because the trees went limp, right? And like some people, some people can uh, are into yeah, that, I mean, like getting their getting stuff smacked. Others not so much, and clearly this tree was not into that. Yeah. No, no, th- this this tree. Well, this was it was actually the vines from. Evil Dead. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on that Bruce Campbell yeah, movie. That, that's, that's, yeah, that 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 scene the Evil Dead tree. Up. I got to say, if you're going to watch the Evil Dead, no. just watch the Evil Dead 2 and start from there. It, 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 it like, it that, has you know, all the fair. best bits from Evil Dead, but also has more, right? And it, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the tree scene. Yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it, it's they took the things that made Evil Dead mm-hmm. like that made it a novel movie, and they just made a whole movie from the things yeah. that made it I think, novel. I rather think like than the it being, first like, twenty minutes of Evil Dead Two film. are Evil Dead One's plot, and then the rest of it's like actual new plot. If my memory is correct. Yeah, uh, range forest officer from. Oh, this is going to be a lot of words in this one that I'm just going oh, to say. Brandon, once, you got just so many of these words trust... coming up in a row. <laughs> there's, there's, it's. I mean, I just beat Pokemon, so like, I feel like I'm I, I'm used to reading new words because I don't keep track of the new Pokemon as they come out. Um, so, Rage Forest officer from Upagandi named Submariana Rao had received many complaints about cows coming home in evenings with their tails missing, and that a local name for such a plant was the Pelimara, which translates to tiger tree. Uh, Though the field staff in the area stated that uh, they'd come across a similar tree in Petrame, uh, which had been partially chopped down, it was also admitted that no official injury had been made, um, sorry, inquiry had been made, uh, into the matter so, as no one had so asked for a report. I have, um, so, so if I'm looking yep. at this from a, a uh, American lens, which is not accurate because it's India and cows in India are different. Um, but, but yeah. this does seem like something a bunch of asshole teenagers would do as a joke. Like, like if it if it were oh, in yeah, Texas, like that. a bunch of like rancher asshole kids, I, I could, I could kind of see this. Yeah, or what, like cow chopping tree? off cow tails and like searing. Yeah. Oh, is that a tails? thing? Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I mean, people do I it guess, to cats, and cows are kind of easier to deal with than a cat. Let's be real. They're easier to deal with, and also this the the well, I have the cow in question uh-huh. a little bit farther down, so it's not like a a like uh, a fuck you cow. It's like a totally it's like a gotcha gotcha large dog cow. So it's yeah, it's yeah. like it's okay. it's a it's a fuck with a bull cow. Um, <clears throat> a team of reporters from Daiji World TV made a long trek out to Patrame to double check the details of the strange story on October twenty seventh. Uh, Dodgy World released their press article along with a rather awful yet charming. When you uh, say awful, vi- what do you YouTube mean video. by awful? Uh, <clears throat> like just, just like quality visual wise. quality, or like they're doing uh, MLG edits on top of the story? No, it's just the quality of the video itself. Um, and also, I wrote this. Um, when did I author this one? A long time ago. So I don't necessarily remember what I didn't like. Don't worry, about the I'm video opening when it. I watched it. <laughs> I'm opening it on my slow ass computer. Because <laughs> Zoom, okay. not Zoom, uh, Discord takes up all of my resources for some reason. Oh! Discord. God! Yeah, I can tell when you open the video because your video got choppy. <laughs> so. Is rather awful a good descriptor? <laughs> if a dog bites a man, it's not I news. Watched the video again. If a man bites a dog, <laughs> it is news. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, <coughs> oh man. Huh? On October eighteenth, huh? huh? a young woman Brandon. named uh, Prince Palatha uh, was walking Brandon, through the forest. We need to go back, go back to the, the start of that because I have to talk about, about this video midday. for a second. Yeah. So, so I'm okay. watching it right, and I <laughs> yeah. hit play. Yeah, there's a brass band playing as they're walking through uh-huh. the 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 jungle, <laughs> like. <laughs> I I okay. <laughs> There's like a synth organ as well. And like they're just playing a bunch of B-roll 
for like a good solid 30 seconds and playing this music as they're walking through the, the jungle. This is amazing. Yeah. What are you talking about bad quality? <laughs> I didn't... Oh, okay. Awful yet charming. There you go. The no, yeah, you're right. Charming. You said charming. Okay. This, I'll give it to you. It I'll give it to notable. you. It's it's kind of wonderful. Uh, charming, yeah. It's not effective as a a concise way of yeah, communicating like... information, but it is effective as entertainment. And I guess that's what they were going for. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so she had been walking about midday through the uh, structures when she saw uh, a tree lifting a struggling cow by its hindquarters from the ground. The animal's tail and hind legs were tangled in the plant's limbs. Only its front legs were touching the dirt. The cow was trying to pull itself away from the tree, and the tree was trying to pull the cow uh, back towards itself. Uh, Push Palatha then ran for her mother, uh, Kuni, mm -hmm. and the women ran back... Um, she warned her daughter not to touch the tree. A local farmer named Vasana uh, was working on a fence nearby and came over to help. He's, he's the one that started to cut the branches off the tree, but the plant did not release the grip onto the, of, from its cow uh, until the whole tree itself was oh. cut down. Um, and the tree, it, it was not very what? big. These, so in this picture, it... that's the remains of the tree in question. So it's... It's been cut down, but like its its trunk is at best like I feel like I can easily it's, it's wrap my hands around it. Thinner than the diameter it. of a new paper ta uh, like, toilet paper roll. With like my, I can easily wrap my fingers, like my middle finger to thumb around yeah, the, it's, the size it's of the trunk. Not a very thick trunk. This this kind of so I'm not like knocking anyone, but this kind of sounds yeah. like uh like a cow got basically walked over a tree like an idiot because cows are dumb um and it got its legs caught in a sapling of some kind yeah. that was like more sturdy than the cow was heavy and it just kind of like got stuck there that's what it sounds like yeah to and that's <clears throat> the, the image below it is the cow yeah, it's and you can there, there's a hand holding onto its collar but it's it, it's not very big I, i'd call it, it like it's about hard like, from um, the screen image but um, i would estimate it's about waist high what was marmaduke what type of dog was Marmaduke? It's it's about a Marmaduke. It's <laughs> it's, it's one Marmaduke. So it's Mar 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 a small cow got oh, stuck no, on the a tiny small net. tree. This kind of how I would interpret. It's this the most news. dangerous of nets. <laughs> Great With Dane. The tiny nut. Uh, oh God. Yeah, that uh, that made me remember the the Yahoo and net joke that the Kanye made on the thing when he did the thing in the stuff. Um, the reporters uh, interviewed Anada uh, Gauda, the owner of the cow. He was applying medicine to the cow's tail, which was still in pain from its experience. Gauda told them that, that the trees attack uh, were known locally as this is kind of restating the Pilamara tiger trees. And that they were mentioned in some folk songs. Uh, in the recent past, several of the villagers had complained their cows had been returned home, uh, returning home from grazing with unexplained injuries. And it was now generally assumed that the troublesome tree was the reason for this and uh, that the problems were over. Uh, it is worth pointing out that the cow was rather small, less than waist high in the video to Ananda Gauda. Uh, right now I'm thinking that tiger trees uh, are they're cow eating trees in the same sense that no you uh, wrote you, they grow in a uh, yeah the cows just get stuck it's it like it what i said for, it's, it's what basically like a sapling there, it's cow a cow a walks tree. over it dumbly <clears throat> or some stupid shit right or it's like yeah. it's like if it's stuck when it's yeah. pulling one way and then the tree like springs back because it's going to want to be straight because it's a, the tree it could appear as if it's pulling the cow back because it literally is it's just trying to return back to its its natural position mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's. Oh, I was gonna make a bad conversion therapy joke, but I won't. <laughs> another villager named uh, Putana recalled that there had been another tree uh, in an area of the village thirty years earlier, which grabbed the bull. Um, the villagers had to cut the branches off the tree to save the animal. 
In this incident, however, the trait involved had been uh, a species called uh, uh, Sorali, uh, so the species of the tree did not necessarily warn... Um, uh, okay, so Pilamara could... is Pilamara is effectively... Um, okay, so Pilamara is effectively just a tree that's gotten a taste for cow flesh is what i'm it's, understanding it's the gave that mouse a cookie yeah it's it's the it's the give a mouse a cookie of trees and the cookie in this case is delicious delicious cow blood yes the best blood oh what was that movie with the vampire cow that was a good movie. oh um with jonathan litnicki i think uh, I don't know the actor's uh, name. Let's do vampire. That that's the kid from. Movie. It's the kid from. Um, uh, the little vampire. Little that's what it's called. The little called. vampire. The little yeah. vampire. Yeah. Good yeah. movie. Uh, I don't know, but they did. I, they I did do it. a shot for shot remake of it. Um, did they? In CGI. Oh. Look at look it up. Little vampire CGI. Look it up. Look it up. Well, Little Vampire 3D. 2017 3D computer animated vampire films directed by Rick Klaus and Kristen Kynrick. It's literally... It doesn't look the worst. It's just funny to me. Yeah, it's got a... Brandon, the little... Like, the, the that one has a 5.4 out of 10. The, the remake. Oh. Oh, good. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so Jonathan Lipnicki um. was there. Oh, I found the art. Oh, I, 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 I guarantee you Jonathan don't want to look it up. Why? His face is way too small for his head. Why is he shirtless? Oh, no. He scanned the screen. <laughs> his f He's John. Hang on, I I need to take a screen recording of this. Oh, it looks like someone did a pinch zoom on his face. It's <laughs> oh, he was in a movie like in 2017. <laughs> Wait, is he an MMA fighter? Oh, uh... wait. <clears throat> oh, <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Lipnicki is a mi a mixed martial artist. <laughs> yes. Wait, the little yes, the little did. Stuart kid grew up to be an MMA fighter so he could fuck up more mice. <gasps> this one's for Stuart. <laughs> well then, uh, <laughs> I would like to take this moment to <laughs> apologize to Mr. Lipnicki for making fun of your <laughs> face, looking like it's far too small to your head. <laughs> Please Wait, he was on my ass. he was on Dawson's Creek? <laughs> what? Oh. Uh, and the Jeff Foxworthy show <laughs> as Justin Foxworthy. Well, no, that was before that. Uh Oh, I mean that's Okay, he was in the down. the original Was there a remake of Dawson maybe? Oh. Oh. One of his most recent things was Celebrity Cooks, uh, was, was Worst Cooks in America, Celebrity Edition, as a contestant in 2019. Oh, he's in Andover. <laughs> the... Oh, wait, no. Oh. I thought, so. <laughs> so, okay, Brandon. Uh, you're, you're aware of Andover, the, the Star Wars TV show, right? Andor, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw one and, episode and couldn't. I saw and over and thought, oh, Andor. I completely cut the V out. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Oh, oh boy. Um. <laughs> oh, he uh, he got Young Artist Awards and a Young okay. Star Award. Yeah, that. I, oh. I have a feeling that that the, if you look at the Young Artist and Young Star Awards, there's just like a a trail of broken lives because of like for all the people involved. Oh, yeah. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't imagine. <sighs> I cannot imagine it being anything other than like just broken lives. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's. Uh... 
Uh, I like e- every child star has the ability to order like bulk prescription pills directly from Pfizer. Like that's that's the only way that's gonna go. <laughs> Yeah, they don't. They don't even need a uh, oh. a therapist. They're just like a, a psychiatrist. They're just like, yeah, no, we know. <laughs> you probably need these. Yeah, like when you win the Young Artist Award, you get given a blank script book. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how that Jesus goes. Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, um, um. <laughs> uh, Oh, it, I found the article transcriptions because this was all originally not in English. Um, on Garth Haslam of Anomalies and Monsters' website. So he, he transcribed okay. everything to English. I um, mean, he had an interesting take at the end of the articles, which is, um, and this is me mm-hmm. quoting him from his website, that I'd like to point out what the experts didn't say while explaining away the story. Uh, clearly, what is being described by the vi- villagers, whether it's real or not real, is a belief in some sort of malevolent spirit that's capable of inhabiting trees and giving it, like, motion and a hunger for flesh. Um, and the idea of using iron to calm the tree. At some point, someone must have it said did, something about there iron. Was a sickle. I didn't catch you, that. If you hit it with a sickle, it, yeah. like, if you smack it with a sickle, it will... Oh. I, I think I, think I, cur- I, I over, like, talked over that, because... It was when I said that, like, anything could well, be I also a don't... Pier, Paramiri Mila or whatever. Pilimara. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, and I also don't read word for word. I read, like, the gist of the paragraph. <laughs> um, so, the using iron to calm the tree matches worldwide folklore about the use of iron in other cultures to quiet spirits and drive away uh, fey and monsters and the such. Uh, this also matches the idea that no particular species of the tree could by- be identified as Pilamara because any tree could become one depending on like mm-hmm. the local bad spirits. Um, so it's not one particular thing it, it's if it gets gotcha. possessed. Um, our next cannibal botanical, the Ataveo, comes to us from James W. Buell's 1887 book, uh, courtesy of archive.org and uh, the title of this one it, it's one of those great old timey titles uh, oh god so the title of this fucking book uh, is Sea and Land an illustrated history of the world and curious things of nature existing before and since the deluge pages 475 there's 20 words, there's 20 words that's the fucking title. title also <laughs> yeah <laughs> Gotta love those old before books. and since the deluge, meaning it believes in like the biblical flood. By the way, just to just to point that out to anyone who's not aware, that's oh, that's like I didn't connect. That yeah, that's dot. what the deluge. I did not is, connect that dot. In, like literature is the is the the biblical flood. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Travelers have told us of a plant, which they assert grows in Central Africa mm-hmm. and also in South America, that is not not uh, to contend with the myriad of large insects which it catches and consumes, but its veracity extends to the making of even humans as its prey. Um, this marvelous vegetable minotaur is represented as having short, thick trunk, uh, from the top, which radiate giant spines, narrow and flexible, but of extraordinary tenaciousness, the edges of which are armed with barbs what the fuck or is dagger-like a teeth. Vegetable and, um, minotaur? Of That's not me editorializing. This weird format is because it's taken directly from how Archive had it structured. So he wrote Marvelous uh, Vegetable I, Minotaur. I, I... I I need to look up what the root words are for Minotaur. Because because Mino Mino uh, I think it's Mino Mino, Mino is specifically Tower. referring to the location that the Minotaur came from. Yeah. Uh right? Uh the bowl of Minos, Tar. Yeah. Yeah. So so Minoa. Yeah. What the fuck? Why what what what? <laughs> what? I I just don't understand how they're using the word minotaur, like in that sentence. Is there a? It, it's. 
I think he's just having fun. I wouldn't necessarily argue that um, someone writing a book from the standpoint that the Great Flood was real, talking about, like, Minoan mythology oh, okay. would necessarily use it properly. There's a there's an alternate meaning of any, any person or thing that de- devours or destroys, which I would love to know where that definition oh, okay. came up far from. I'd love to know where it came from or how he knew that, because I would always assume, a, like, the one in the labyrinth. Yeah, that, that's like my Im- immediate thinking, too. Yeah. Uh, so instead of growing upright or at an inclined angle from the trunk, these spines uh, layer their outer ends upon the ground, and so gracefully are they distributed that the trunk resembles uh, an easy couch with green drapery around it. Um, okay, this is this is not like this is very this is this is satire. There's no doubt in my mind that this is satire. It can't. Uh, it, it. How do you write a book? I forget the total page count, but like we're almost 500 pages in. This can't be satire. I this has to be satire because like there's no way that anyone would like write that and believe it. That sounds like something That's, someone's making up. It's the 1800s. It's uh, I'm I'm looking at this fucking this book. Guy's name I'm quick. looking up this fucking book. I'm looking up this book. Don't worry. Keep going. Keep going. I'm reading it. It's there. You can scroll to the bottom. Go 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 right to yeah, no, I've got, got it. I got the book. Don't worry. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Acknowledgement of harmful content. Uh. Oh no. Oh, I'm sure it contains some. Weird oh, the cannibals stuff. and wild races of the uh, world. The unfortunate. Tr- Oh, yeah. Uh, The unfortunate traveler, ignorant of monstrous creation which lies on it in this way, uh, and curious to examine the strange plant or rest himself upon its uh, inviting stock, approaches without a suspicion of his certain doom. Uh, The moment his feet are set within the circle of horrid spines, they rise up like gigantic serpents and entwine themselves about him until he is drawn upon the stump when he speedily drive their daggers into the body, thus complete the massacre. The body is crushed until every drop of blood is squeezed out and becomes absorbed um, by the gore living plant. Then the carcass is thrown out of this horrid trap and is set up again. Um, Yeah, and then there's a nice... uh, Fun illustration okay. we got here of uh, the Wiggly Woo okay. tree with all so, this um, these little. First of all, yeah. it looks like Cthulhu had sex with a tree, and a man's being eaten by it. As to uh, what Fair. I assume to be, like I, I assume these are all African people. Um, they could be South American because he said that it exists in both. Um, dark skin, dark skin, right? Yeah. Um, so a collection of, of dark skinned people. Um, two of them are looking yeah. on in terror as a third one is like getting just strangulated. Yeah, it, it, it's looking it's looking <laughs> uh, fucked up. conspicuously <laughs> yeah. like a um like a a, a particularly uh, a particularly horny um a particularly horny uh, hentai. Yeah. Oh, a tentacle tree. Yeah. You know what? These guys look like they're doing the 1800s equivalent of, like, their friends getting fucked up by a tree, but instead of running to get help, they're just, like, staring at it like, oh, whoa. Oh. Oh, sucks to be Ted. Oh, we'll help you, Ted. Oh, God. Like, they're just so, recording it instead of getting help. Oh, okay. So, I just want to take a second to explain, to talk about this book a little bit. Um, I haven't read it in its entirety, but I'm reading the titles, and <laughs> it tells me a lot about this person. I bet it's not great. Um, uh, chapter twenty-three: The Birth of Man. Evidence of our first par- uh, our first parents. Where was the Garden of Eden? The wonderful country of Atlantis. Oh, Plato's description. From whence originated the mythology of the ancients? The Great Deluge. Hindu theory of creation, and it's spelled H I N D O O. Um. <laughs> Periodical destruction of the Earth, philosophy of Pythagoras, remarkable similarities between Mosaic and Aztec chronicles. So, yeah. This guy's got a lot of ideas. Oh, and then here's Curiosities. The Dragon Blood Tree of T- 
Tenrific. What? I didn't see that one. The lion. Most terrible land creatures. The mighty polar bear. <laughs> yeah. It- Superstitions and legends of the sea. The legends of the Hill- pillars of Hercules. Monsters of the Mediterranean. Singular origins of the ocean navigation. Superstitions of Columbus's crew. The phantom shift. Witchcraft on the sea. Singular beliefs still prevailing. Offerings to sea gods. Deities that preside over ships. <laughs> launching and christening of a ship. Mysterious islands, virtues of a child, a child's. It's a bad what? spot to pause. Cala- cal- <laughs> a child's call marvelous bird bearing trees. <laughs> Dead bodies on shipboard, people of the sea, wonderful stories of mermaids in the ancient mariner. What the fuck is this book about? <laughs> I think it's just a collection of random shit. <laughs> it, it, that's what it seems like. Uh, what is what is this title? What is the title of this chapter? Dissimilarity of elements does not necessarily destroy harmony of identity. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Is he gotta love these old books? <laughs> it had, I, I'm looking at this on the Biodiversity Heritage website, and it has the acknowledgement of harmful content, meaning that there's a fuck ton of racist shit probably in this book. Oh, yeah. Like, probably. And they didn't... They, to be fair, they did not need to show me that because I I I figured that I cracked that particular <laughs> uh, mystery pretty quickly on this one. That was a uh, that did not take a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, of guessing for no. me. I was just like, oh no, I got this dead to rights. I know what's going on here. Oh, so, so he continues. Uh, A gentleman of my acquaintance, who for a long time resided in Central America, affirms the existence of such a plant as I have here briefly described, except that instead of uh, the filaments or spines resting on the ground, um, he says they move themselves uh, constantly in the air, like so many huge serpents in an angry discussion, uh, occasionally darting from side to side as if striking at an imaginary foe. When their prey comes within reach, the spines reach out with all... Si- uh, s- oh, I don't even know what that word means. Sa- sagacity? S- sagacity. Sagacity. I'm going sagacity. 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 Um, if I may be allowed to apply the expression to a vegetable creature... Um, and grasp it in an unyielding embrace from whence it only issues uh, when all the substance of the body is yielded up uh, in its action of exerting pressure upon its prey. This dreadful plant resembles the instrument used in the Dark Ages for afflicting torturous death. Which I... Okay. He, he needs to be specific. He, 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 does, he does say it later. And it's the Iron Maiden. Which was never used. Which was never used. Right? It was, I'm not no, it was, I'm not forgetting that, am I? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Actually, I think there's like... I think we know when it was created. Like, And I could be wrong, but I think it was created for a museum. Like, we, I think they know like the first one, when it was made, what it was made for. Um... So they were never used, and they're also never medieval, no, it, 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 it's, is my it, recollection. It's one of those, like, as a torture device, it kind of fails, like, because I feel like it would just kill the person. Right? Yeah, like, right away. Like, if you want to torture, actually, go pre-Middle Ages, go straight to the Brazen Bull. I don't know if those were ever actually used uh, either, but those were, like, the, fucking gnarly. The Iron Maiden of Nuremberg, probably the most famous, which was built in the 1800s and destroyed by Allied bombing in 1944. Uh, so it looks like, it looks like it didn't, like, yeah. the co- the more common torture was just to kind of bind people up with root. Yeah, yeah bind them, <laughs> poke them with stuff. It works. I mean, really, really, if we're going to be honest, like, just having the Iron Man there, enough of a reason to, like, um, like, like, that's it's just, corruptly- you just need it for... Yeah, like, like, it would be more useful in the corner of the room when you're trying to get the information from someone mm-hmm. than it would be to actually use on the person. Yes, <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the, hey, see that fucking thing? Not using it now, but I could be. Yeah. <laughs> also, 
Uh, I wanted to. I, I I was looking up the direct like definition for sagacity, and uh-huh. uh, the dictionary definition is the quality of being sag- sagacious. And it's like, yes, I know what ty mean adds to things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot, <laughs> dictionary.com. <laughs> but it, it's like it's wisdom. so useful. Because it's specifically talking oh, okay. about like sag- sagacious Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, in like a wise sage type. Uh, I yeah. follow that. But I, I just, um, I wanted to comment on how like, like I know that that's how that goes for like the TY things, but it's like, yes, I understand uh, how English does certain things. Please just actually yeah. give me, like, if it was a book dictionary, fine. But you're a fucking web dictionary. You can just copy and paste the definition in there. Just steal that shit straight from Merriam-Webster. Um, I'm going to skip this whole paragraph because it's literally just him describing what an Iron Maiden is. And I'm assuming that everyone knows what an Iron Maiden is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, he's... Doc- yeah, it was made somewhat crudely to represent a woman. Hence, the name applied to it was The Maiden. Anywho... Yeah. Uh, Dr. Antonio Jose Marquez, a distinguished gentleman of the city of Baranguela in uh, the United States of Colombia, is describing this wonderful plant to the author, affirms that when excited, it violently agitates its long tentacle-like stems, um, rasping upon each other, producing a hissing noise, which resembles the Spanish expression, ya te veo, which is where I guess they're getting the, um, the name of this plant. The literal translation is, I see you. The plant, therefore known in South Africa by the name Yataveo, he further asserts that the poison that they're so poisonous, the stems uh, that if the flesh of any animal is punctured by the barbs, uh, a rapidly eating ulcer immediately forms, uh, for which there is no known antidote, and the death speedily ensues. Um, so okay, okay, no ulcer is going to give you a speedy death. I just want to, like, say. No, also just going to give you a speedy death. And uh, if you're, like, that violent, you don't need to be also, like, poisonous or venomous. Poisonous. Right? Like, if you're that. Yeah. Like, that'd be like if a shark was also poisonous. Like, it's kind of what's the point. Yeah. It's like, okay, like, cool, I guess. I mean, like, it's one of those things where it's like a, a viper being poisonous makes sense because it's not, like, a huge animal. Right. Yeah, it's not a but huge a bow animal. Is not- a bow is not poisonous because it can just, like, fucking crush you to death. Yeah, exactly. Same thing with with scorpions, right? Like, yeah. tiny scorpions, super fucking poisonous. Big scorpions, nah, they just use their stinger and yeah. their, their claws. Like, they don't need to be poisonous. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> bad uh, science. This bad dude is science. bad. Also, I want to point something out. Yeah. <laughs> there is, um... There's a there's a picture in the book called Romans watching the uh, expiring of the expiring throes of a mullet, which I assume is a type of fish, but I it's really <laughs> fucking hilarious to me because like I was like looking through the table of contents at illustrations and I'm like, wait, wait, am I going to see a picture of Billy Ray Cyrus, <laughs> a bunch of Romans surrounding him just in a toga? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were looking the we were looking this whole time for um evidence of of Keanu Reeves and it turns out Billy Ray Cyrus was the true vampire. I would love it if our our uh, you know Greece, Grecian history textbooks had just pictures of like Joe Dirt in a bathhouse. <laughs> but but I want to see him with the um I want to see him with the the dreads wig instead. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's just at two Brute, and he's got a PBR in his hand. <laughs> oh God! Little does anyone know. Uh, uh, that day, Caesar was not wearing a toga or like a purple raiment. He was wearing a uh, a wife beater and a pair of blue jeans that he yeah. found under the <laughs> under the under the uh, aqueduct. Someone's got blood on my Levi's. <laughs> Why am I getting so cold? You <laughs> <Hey>, too. <laughs> uh, 
It is a singular thing and much to be deplored if such a voracious plant exists that we can find no description of it in most elaborate works on botany. Yet hundreds of possible travelers declare they have frequently seen it and not only watched it when uh, in normal condition, but one African explorer declares he once witnessed the destruction of a native who was accidentally caught by one. Um, it has also been asserted in the fan country of Africa, criminals and those convicted of practicing witchcraft are sometimes fed alive to this man-eating plant, all of which, however, I am inclined to doubt, not that there are no foundation for such statements as travelers sometimes uh, make about this astonishing growth, but that the facts are greatly exaggerated. Okay, <clears throat> that's your line in the sand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like the, yeah. Like, okay, okay, dude. So the the existence of the plant is not the thing that's like, nah, no way. It's the, ah, uh, no, people would never sacrifice other people to plants, as though that's not a fucking thing that we do all the time with everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Also, where are the hundreds of travelers? He's only like yeah, quoted where like are two they? people. He's why quoted. Did... <laughs> like, what? Why did? Why is this the fir first and only instance of this coming up? Why isn't it in like newspapers everywhere? Because when Billy came back from Africa, he saw people being fed alive to a plant. I feel like would have made it to a newspaper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, probably it did. To be fair, like the Madagascar plant, I think was in newspapers for what it's worth. That one was. That one was a newspaper. So, uh, yeah. Um, but we also know the origin of that, and it, like it was, it like it was just. I, I'm not going to explain it. Go listen to episode seven. Um, next up is the monkey trap tree, uh, but not the sad one that's real when you drill a oh, hole in a gourd, no! and then a monkey comes and puts its hand in it and makes a fist, and it can't get its hand back out, and then you come back sometimes days later to collect the monkey because you're a piece of shit poacher trying to sell monkeys. But the cryptid one. What? I didn't know you that didn't existed. Know that was a thing? Well, I I kind of assume something like that happened, but I didn't know that that was like the mechanism that they did it by. Yeah, you just like tie a gourd or like a coconut or whatever to a tree, and then drill a hole in it. And the idea is the monkey goes in, and tries to take the stuff inside out, and the he's not smart enough or willing to like let unmake a fist to let go to get his hand out, and then you got yourself a monkey. Well, but if you let go, then you lose the stuff that's in your hand. Yeah, I think I saw an episode of, like, Steve Irwin going around and trying to, like, help monkeys. <laughs> or, uh, or it might have been a Zabumafu or something. No, that's too dark for Zabumafu. It's one of those animal shows where I was, like, <laughs> as a kid, I was, like, because they showed you, like, a monkey stuck in it, like, it wore to its bone. And you're, like, I was, like, oh, I feel like this isn't dark. I'm not oh, the right audience no. for this. Oh, no. Zabumafu after hours. Oh god. Zabumafu's oh, like coming the for them poachers. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh okay, the settings for this one uh are another case of all the different websites use the exact same copy and pasted three or four sentences. However, I found one that actually cited a source. Um and that is Randall Schwartz's 1974 book carnivorous plants which i was able to get a hard copy from from uh linton community college in uh albany oregon what um i don't know why but it was on sale for like five bucks they just had it they just had it <laughs> so i got it five bucks seems like a lot for like a really weird obscure book that no one would ever want except you so it's it's not do i have it no it's oh yeah is this it no it's upstairs so it's, it actually is just a straightforward, um, actually, oh, actually you describe it in the next paragraph. It's a straightforward book for like college students. Like it's not a weird, obscure thing. <clears throat> it's definitely intended for like botanists consisting mostly of high quality photos and descriptions of carnivorous plants. Um, based on where the spine crease is the worst, it would appear that the botany students were most interested in, uh, Serenciana Dramondi a three-foot-tall carnivorous plant that is apparently difficult to grow um, and will withstand light frost and reproduce with seeds or rhizome division. I included a picture. So it's it's just like a botany Yeah, I mean, book. that's like a legit, um, like a legit real plant. Oh, I... 
You know what? I've seen this book before. Yeah, I've seen it in libraries you? before. I recognize the cover. Oh, okay. I recognize the cover. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the last portion of the book is just a list of places where you can buy carnivorous plants. Amazing. Um, but the section... At- it's just great. It's just here's, a, here's where you can get all of the seeds for these things in the. It's book. like the anarchar, anarchist cookbook of botanists. Yeah, <laughs> it's like kind of yeah. It's like fuck, fuck insects. We're gonna murder them all, even though like we need insects to like you know propagate the the plants. But nah, fuck them. Anarchy. <laughs> Anarchy. Let's go throw bananas in an oven and tell people it'll get you high. Banana Dean, bro. Wait, um, what? You never heard of Banana Dean? No. Like, kids stop. It was like some shit in, like, the Anarchist cookbook. And it, 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 we're like, if you bake ba- banana peels in the oven for long enough, they'll turn into, like, a drug that you can do called Banana Dean. <laughs> and then there was just, like, for a while, YouTube videos of people, like, showing you how to make it. But, like, one, don't do that. And two, don't, just don't do it. Not even because it doesn't work. Just don't, I I don't care. Actually, you do you. Go fucking bake a banana. I mean, I I Um, think think a lot of stuff in the Anarchist cookbook is just to kill dumb people. Kind of, yes. Right? Like, like a lot of it. A lot of it's just there to like. Yeah. It's a little bit survivable of the fittest, right? I yeah. mean, when you're teaching someone to to make a Molotov cocktail and, like, a bomb, right? Like, there's a degree of that that's just, like, well, we expect, like, at least 20% of people who do this will die. Yeah. <laughs> um, But the section at the end, right before it, is just for plants from mythology. Uh, and before I cover the portion covered in the book, let's go over what these sites have gleaned from the source material. Um... The trunk of the Brazilian monkey trap tree has a diameter of about 90 centimeters, which is about, uh, or and is about six or seven meters high. Around the lower part of the tree are leaves, which are a 0.9 to 20 centimeters uh, large and a thickness of a thumb. Uh, the tree releases a distinct scent that attracts animals, especially monkeys. Uh, the attracted animal will then climb up the trunk and then be enveloped by its leaves, never to be seen again. Three or four days later, the leaves open again, and the bones from its victims fall out, um, from w- which, like, every vestige of flesh has been stripped. Interesting. Um, and here's what the... S- yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's kind of cool, because it's not like... It's not like a Madagascar it, tree, it's... or, like, the tiger tree, or, or, like... It's not like a violent action. It's just, like, a bigger Venus flytrap, kind of, almost. Yeah, it's, like, borderline... Not fully believable but like it, it's it's on the on the borderline of like okay like it's unlikely but you know it's not like magical it's, plant vines moving and like moving so quickly yeah, that yeah. it's really not that far out there which is is kind of cool um a recent report is credited to a Brazilian explorer named Mariano da Silva, who returned from an expedition that led him to a district of Brazil that borders on Guyana. Uh, he had sought out the settlement of Yatapu of the Yatapu Indians. Um, during his journey, he saw a tree which nourishes itself on animals. The tree uh, itself exudes a particular sharp odor which attracts its victims. Um, more of the same um the material i found does not give any other descriptors uh about the tree as i found online but it does hint at a few other red flags uh, and this is the only part of the science fiction and mythology section uh that does not cite a source uh so let's do a little research um there in fact was a brazilian military officer named uh Candido Marina da Silva, who lived there from 1865 to 1958, mm-hmm. right? So this is just me trying to like they didn't list a source, so I'm like, is the per- there, there how, is a person who is exists. this believable? We know that now. Yeah, so we know a, a guy exists at the time, and he did have expeditions. Um, their locations I have drawn on the map below. One is centrally located. Uh, 
or one is in the centrally located state of Grasso and the middle eastern shore uh, side state of San Paulo, none of which are anywhere near Guyana. Um, he did, however, go on an expedition with uh, Teddy Roosevelt to map the Rio uh, de Duvida, uh, or the River of Doubt, um, which is very near Guyana, as demonstrated by my red okay, squiggle. Okay, so I want to um, just point out something really quick. I'm looking at... Um, yeah. I am looking at this, this image, and... It kind of yeah. looks like a, a face that's, like, constipated or, like, trying to push oh. a poop out. If you, yeah. like, rotate it 90 it's degrees kinda got like a clockwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. It's like a <laughs> mm -hmm face. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, on that map, the circles are uh, where mm -hmm. he went, and that river is mm -hmm. the squiggle. And so, he did go to the mm -hmm. squiggle. He did not go to Guyana, that top circle, but he was very close to it. And if you were talking to him and you had never been to Brazil, or, 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 or I could see him just saying that because it's a more notable place than the fucking river. Like, who would know where the river of doubt is? So he, if you're like, I do that when I give people directions mm -hmm. to stuff, I name bigger landmarks, not more, not specific. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's just the way that people communicate. Like, so if it, this it is just. Yeah. And so if this were to be real, that's the area I think he would have been talking. And also, like, River of Doubt, great place for a can like man-eating tree. It really um, is. It is. And it's that's real. We know the River of Doubt, that's a real place. He went there with Teddy Roosevelt. Um, and uh, so on the expedition with Teddy Roosevelt that this guy, Mariano de Silva, really did... Uh, it was a shit show. Lots of malaria. Literally everyone but one person got malaria. I mean, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that, that sounds about right, because like, malaria has been one of, like, one of the more serious diseases that has afflicted humankind. Yeah. Uh, Teddy almost died from an infected wound on his leg, and they were saved by people harvesting rubber trees for their new U.S. rubber tire industry, which... Um, Maybe gu guillotine the Michelin Man, I guess. Uh, don't look into it, but there are some broad atrocities associated with the United oh, States. Oh, well, yeah, tires. I could have told you that. Um, like, anyway. Honestly, honestly, like, <laughs> yeah. United States plus any other word, there's probably at least one atrocity that you can find. Like, let's be real. It, it's not that hard. <laughs> I, I could probably, you could. Yeah, you, yeah. Yes, especially, especially anything rubber. involving a natural resource. Like, if a natural resource is involved, yeah. <laughs> it almost definitely has a terrible story. Like, like there's zero fucking doubt. Uh, anyway, uh, this is all to say that no one in that expedition mentioned a carnivorous plant. Never, it never came out once from the expedition. Um, I could not find any... Well, that's because they were, like... It's because they were sweating and seeing a brain. <laughs> yeah, they... <laughs> They're too busy. You know why? The the carnivorous plant didn't want to eat people that were shitting their brains out. It has too much self respect. That's why they didn't come is, across is it. Malaria shitting your brains out? I it's, don't know. I think it's a part of it. I don't know. What are malaria? Symptoms? Flu like uh, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may also occur. Fever, flu like illness, including shaking, chills, headache, muscle aches, tiredness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, malaria may cause anemia and jaundice. Eh, all right. Um, I could not find any sources other than this article relating to the uh, Itapu native peoples, uh, which does not mean that they're not or were not a thing in the area at the time, but all that comes up when you look them up is the monkey trap tree mm -hmm. uh, and the frequency of which it's uh, a surname in India. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. The only thing I found relating to plants and the keyword uh, Yatapu is a paper from the University of Mexico uh, titled Uncultivated Native Plants Use as Sources of Food, uh, in which in San Felipe, people roast the joints of the ap Aputia polycantha, which uh, with dried sweet corn, and the word they use for that plant is yatapu. Yatapu. Um, given this yatapu, yatapu. Given this information, I tend to lean towards the idea that Randall Schwartz didn't necessarily make it up 
but rather it was like a pop rumor going around and someone picked up uh, like a Roosevelt expedition involving the river of doubt and picked a guy whose name was associated with that and uh, made up some some fanciful uh, plant. Um, uh, my guess is putting on my pessimist glasses. Uh, that's whoever came up with the story was looking at a list of surnames from India, conflating the word for uh, like the surname with the word for a native people from India. It's like this. Just I don't know, it's just a bunch of weird. Yeah. In Brazil, it's listen, man. I wrote this. I don't know what I was thinking when <laughs> months ago when I wrote this or whatever. Fair enough. I mean, whenever I authored the, I file. mean, he also didn't say that it wasn't mythology, <clears throat> right? Like in the book, it's he. I, I have to go and grab the book to be sure, but I it was lumped in the mythology section. Okay. So, so I mean, there's there's but, no like evidence of deliberate forgery, from my perspective. There's no evidence of deliberate forgery. Um, I think there just wasn't a lot of follow up on like researching it or doing like looking for sources, which is why like he intentionally didn't cite a source. Yeah, I mean, but that that I think that was deliberate on his part because I was able to find sources that danced all around it. So I think it was like a story he was like aware of and threw in the book, but wasn't confident enough to like actually put source material as a sighting. But he just wanted to include it. And he's like, it's fun. It's the mythology section. What's the risk? Yeah. I mean, it seems dumb. Like, it, like not dumb, but like it just a dumb story that like you add for fun to pad out your, your page count. Yeah. I mean, you know, to pad your page count and like it's th- it's at the end of like gratuitous isn't the word but it's at the end of like just a straight up botany book so like why not have some fun in the back you know yeah this is, this is just botany nerd shit i assume yeah botany nerds i don't know i don't, I don't yeah. get botany. i don't i'm not i'm not i'm not of that world so i don't know maybe this is just like a meme this is botany memes right here it could be a botany meme yeah let's start our new podcast botany botany memes it's going to be like two episodes because we're going to not be able to find any because the botanists are good at hiding their memes. You know, you know what the first we put the, the botany back into BDSM. Oh. That's what that B stands for. Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, let's go rub some nettles oh, on our no. junk. <laughs> oh, no. Well, let's find out if uh, let's find out if the oils and um, poison ivy actually affect you. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, what'd you what'd you do? Uh, poison ivy oil as a uh, as lube. Oh, did you Google it? No, I'm just thinking about it. Like, oh, because like, there's oils in poison ivy. You can make poison ivy oil, right? So theoretically, yeah, you could collect it. Theoretically, there's nothing to stop you. You could make. You could make poison ivy lube. Like, you can do that. That's a you thing could. you could do. I don't know why you do it, I, but you can do it. There's nothing stopping anyone from doing that, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you just, you. I do have access poison to poison ivy. ivy. Lube. Let's see. Can I get some? <laughs> Nuclear? <laughs> oh, no! Oh. Uh. Wait, what happened? <laughs> There's an R slash nuclear revenge thing where the dude replaced the... Uh, he put poison ivy oil into someone's lube who cheated on him. So, apparently it wasn't oh, original gosh. thought. So, how about that? Um... <laughs> There are no All right, then. I guess thoughts. that's the episode with uh, with poison ivy lube. That's the true can- can- carnivorous plant. Let's we are we are let's end. It stayed once. on theme. We're ending um, on theme. <laughs> so, uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, uh, be sure to check us out on all of our things. You know, we're on cryptopediacast.com for our website, which has links to everything that we're going to say here. Um, Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Fuck!
literally every time. Um, our Twitter is also at ChrisPediaCast, which, you know, who knows how long that, that shit's going to last. Um, and if you're curious, Elon Musk, uh, at last check, um, according to Elon Musk's Elon Musk's jet on Instagram, he is currently, at the time of recording, in Qatar. So, uh, how about that? Um, uh, our email... Hmm? Oh, oh, oh. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... If any, if you're ever curious, like, there's a plane in the sky, or what the fuck is that helicopter? Mm -hmm. Just go to flightradar24.com, because all of those, unless it's, like, a medical helicopter, mm -hmm. I think, all of those, that is all public information that's out there. Um, so that's just a fun thing to do. If there's, like, a jet flying over your head, you go there, it'll, like, show your location, and they'll, yeah, it, if you tap it, on it, because it shows you literally every flight and where they are. It's all public information. You tap on the picture of the plane... It'll tell you, like, its speed, its altitude, its license plate number. They don't really have license plate, but it's, like, the equivalent. There's a lot of information that you just go, oh, fun, now I know things. They also include, like, fuel usage. But also, if you know the number, yeah, like, a lot of cool information. And if you're ever curious about where Elon Musk is at the time and that account's blocked, uh, just type in the number of the thing, I think. I think it'll just take you to it. <laughs> N628TS. Hex A eight eight five A F. Yeah, and then uh, there you go. Boom! Now you can track Elon Musk's jet. Yeah, pretty much. Um, also, not doxing because you're tracking a plane. Um, and also, it's public record. It's public record. Doesn't you know mean it is he's doxing though? What's that? You know what? You know what is doxing? What? Uh, making a call to action to your followers to ask who is this person, posting a picture of a person and their license plate number. That is doxing. Oh, yes. Why well, Did he do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, immediately after, like, banning uh, the <laughs> Elon Musk jet. That's so, funny. So, <laughs> uh, if you want to email us, it's cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Uh, we have a YouTube at Cryptopedia. Um, we also have a Patreon linked in the show notes. Um, and let's, uh, let's give a thanks to our jackalopes, Brandon. Yeah, so thank you to uh, to uh, Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Jonathan Shepard, Matthew Smith, Will Smith, uh, Lenwood Sharp, and Bushcraft Kelso. I think this might be an old one because I think Th but, this is an whatever. older one. It's, yeah, I think, uh, I think we might need to. I think we might need to update our jackalopes. Um, I don't think there's... anyone's missing. I I think someone changed their name between. Oh, you know what? Then. I believe you're um, correct. Yeah, this is an older one. If but I'm ever, not sure. Sometimes I forget to go in and update because I have like the same template I use for all of them. Um, if you if you weren't read properly, just yell at us on our Discord, which you can join. Yes, is then there's a link in the show notes. Perfect, great synergy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Um, also, uh, just as a reminder, we're not going to be back in two weeks. We're taking a we were taking the the because it, it's it's um, resetting new for Year's. the season. Yeah, New Year's and all yes. that. Yeah, resetting. So we're gonna do a reset, and uh, we'll be back eventually. Back for but season four. But this, oh god, wait, is this this would actually be season five technically? Oh god, if we're, do if we're doing it years. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um God damn it. If you have any requests or stories because we are on this is episode 126 of this fucking podcast. Um so if you have any cryptid requests or suggestions other than when to go, hit me up. <laughs> I got it. Cuz Slenderman was like my big finale for this year. Uh <laughs> I still am working. I'm working an angle with the rock, but it's almost all Dwayne Johnson jokes. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Brandon, do you want to go through your your shiz? Yeah, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is at crypto brandon for the time being. And Heinz Canada, and I have a hive that yep. I rarely even. Use. Oh, I have a hive, and I got two messages like yesterday, and I'm like, I haven't. E I forgot that that even existed. Yeah. 
Like, I literally just got it to, like, ensure that my username was on there. Yeah. That was it. I, um, I made a few posts, but, and then I fell off the train. Yeah. It just takes so damn long to load. Yeah, it's really it's really not as snappy. Um, anywho, uh, I'm on Instagram at Mew2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is JohnDunhamGames.com, and my email is John at Um I'm also accessible by... Uh, speaking sacrilegious things about uh various transformers uh related things that's probably going to get me quicker um or <laughs> making making uh assumptions about creationist dinosaurs those are the two things that are going to summon me quicker probably than any of the other ways of talking about me <laughs> if so, there's any way to to connect uh creationism to cheat whore uh there's you've got a solid bet you'll have you'll awaken he, the jaunt like you don't even have to hit send on the message he'll sense no. it i'll sense it i sense the disturbance in the force um or <laughs> rather the disturbance in the allspark <laughs> uh, uh, oh our uh did i read the, the art thing no you I didn't because i made it i made a I transformers did, joke i read it in my head and i couldn't remember if i read it with my mouth at, that also. happens a lot to uh, me lately <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. It's really weird actually because technically I'm more healthy than I've ever been because I exercise every other day now. Yeah. And like wow, I've been I've been doing I was doing like my bicycles before it got fucking cold. So like I'm probably the healthiest I've been in like well <laughs> over a decade. But at the same time, I feel like I'm totally losing it. So there's that. There's, so I'm the opposite. I don't exercise, even, but I used to a lot. And I noticed that um, Cup of Noodles went back on uh, sale for like regular price. So I have four cases on the way. <laughs> so you're getting healthy. I'm going to work on that sodium bloat real hard. <laughs> Watch, you're, you're, and you're going to be at your sharpest ever. And then I'm just going to be like, it's just... I just work better at unhealthy, I guess. Maybe that's... <laughs> maybe we work better at unhealthy? I think maybe. <laughs> that's right, because I remember, like, you used to be, like, 13% uh, funny in at least. Oh, Brandon, you remember my 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 Dr. Pepper collection of cans, right? Yeah. I used to drink yeah. Dr. Pepper like water. Yeah. Yes, for, like, a while. And always, the, the thing is, like, you would never get a two liter. No. Like, it would just have cans. Just so many cans. Just cans. <laughs> just cans. Just cans. <laughs> hey, hey. I mean, I, I had like a 4 0 in college, so the Dr. Pepper must have done something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Anywho, uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, things are going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs>